Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. When someone is busy in their life, working through challenges and struggles, we do not need total strangers who work in retail establishments interfering with our life. Every human being has the right to life in America. Every human being has the right to safety in America. Retail employees that don't like something they see near their companies start to play God. When they do that, they put themselves at major legal risk. The reason is when they start to provide information to someone who pretends to be a police officer, or someone who is lying about being a police officer, or someone who is even a police officer, they could be violating federal law, meaning they could be providing information that could be provisioned to someone who is a stalker and molester. They could be aiding and, ab and abetting rape. The people who think they have the right to touch people in the night are truly molesters. They might even be incestuous if they are related to them. But when a man wakes up every morning finding that his parts are being abused, he is going to be very upset. At this point in time, I can tell you the story of this morning, that I went on the Lord's request to find a few things to eat. And when I do that, it's never a treat for me because they're not things that I would choose for myself. They're usually things to give away. And they're usually things that have already been thrown away because they've timed out, and yet they still have food and nutritional value. It is something that a military person knows how to do, who's called a discoverer. A discoverer is also someone who discovers what law enforcement do illegally, and that's why there's a lot of problems in a community. Because when a law enforcement officer does not do their job with the petty thieves and the molesters and the rapists and the Chinese and Koreans who come here to interfere with our technology rights or the retail employees that steal our cell phones and our information and give it out, we end up with major problems because what they'll do is that high they get from being in some form of power when they're not normally in power in their life will start to eat at them in a codependency oriented way and they will desperately need to keep doing things like that so they can feel powerful in a job that has no power for them at all. You see, most people don't recognize their own personal power. Your own personal power is in your decision what you decide to do for a living. Myself, I've chosen my own living because I then can live outdoors how I like, I then can meet people when I want, and I also can take care of myself provided the molesters of the world stop touching me in the night. This morning when I was walking to feed my geese that come and find me every morning and then I tell them with my hand signals like any good pet owner and I'm not their owner but would do that I have no food at this moment I brought them some things to try to see if they would eat them because they're a part of the earth. They didn't exactly like them but they didn't exactly not like them so it was sort of interesting the scientific study that I'm making of geese. But what I know is that I'm a part of their family because they nip at me very gently when they want to say, hey, I'm here, give me some food. But my point of sharing the story is that any animal knows what is a person of God's glory. And any animal knows what a person is who's not of God's glory if they're partially domesticated. Birds are very, very intelligent and totally a part of God's house. It's why angels have wings. But if you didn't know those things, it means you did no metaphysical study in your Bible or in your Quran or in anything about the Lord across the world or in our land. Regardless of the fact that I'm not crazy about the Quran, I have read it. I've read two copies. I preferred the first to the second because it was a lot better written and better organized. But I didn't have the choice of that first one when I asked for it. When I talk to people about what happened this morning, you're going to have to really think it through because I'm purposely stretching this out to make you think, make you listen, and make you hear. Because what's happening to me could be happening to anyone, anywhere, at any time. There is a garbage company that was running its garbage men on the campus of the University of Illinois. There is a gentleman who wears his hair now more like I used to in my marketing materials. He didn't used to be like that. He used to be a lot more bushy, a lot more misshaven, and openly, all of a sudden, once he met me, he started cleaning himself up. But he started to always show up every time I walked through a street to check a garbage, not only for food for me, if I needed it, because 
some of the pizza places throw out marvelous stuff. And people know that who live in poverty. They all know that. I know that my own siblings have pulled food from the trash. I know that the care provider to my mother pulls things from the trash. So I'm not going to be embarrassed about the fact that people who are smart know what is and isn't state food still, despite the fact there might be laws that says it's time to time this out for the benefit of the company's laws and rules, etc. We also know that employees steal food, but I'm not going there too far. What I'm talking about is different. What I'm saying is that now all of a sudden, that man who was running his truck in his route on the campus is now out here at the mall. Why is that? What also was unusual is that there's no garbage can anywhere near me and that lakefront where I go to see my geese friends who come and find me usually several times a day to say, hey, what kind of food you got? And if I can, and if I am allowed by the Lord to feed them, I will. Sometimes I'm told which ones to feed more because of how they are. They are getting more ornery because of the lack of food and the abuse they're getting from people. But what I can tell you is that that man had no reason at all to drive with the truck he was driving, which wasn't actually a dump truck, to drive through the Burger King lot at all. And basically, he started shouting out his window at me. So I gave him the finger, like any good military person would do, and I went on with my day. Because I don't know him, despite having seen him before, but I could just tell by his driving that he was the guy from the campus. Isn't that interesting? I actually couldn't see who the driver was. With that, he came blasting through the tar Target parking lot as fast as he could, driving around, and I thought he might hit me, so I stepped up off the driveway there, off that thoroughfare there, that's kind of a, uh, a driveway to the shops, and I stepped into the grass. Then he started shouting at me in a way that I couldn't even hear what the hell he was saying over his very noisy truck, which again, wasn't a dump truck. And I simply said to him, you are driving a U.S. dot truck. Do you understand what that means? I think it took him a while to process what that meant, that his behavior in that vehicle could blow up in his face. Because under no laws of America do you have the fucking right to take a truck that is supported by the United States government in some monetary way or some certifica certification way and run someone down with it. 